In today's video, I'm going to be talking about construction contingency. We'll talk about the different types of contingency and why construction contingencies are necessary. So let's go. So a construction contingency is a set amount of money that is budgeted at the onset of a construction project to cover unforeseen or unexpected costs throughout the course of construction. But there's much more to it than just that. Construction contingency is part of the actual overall construction budget. The total value or dollar amount is typically based on a percentage of the overall construction cost or just a value that's agreed upon with the owner within the contract. So for example, if you have a construction project that is going to cost, let's say $50 million and you've agreed on a 3% contractor contingency within the contract, that means that you would have $1.5 million in contingency, which is 3% of 50 million, which are unallocated dollars to use for those unforeseen conditions. Now, the contractor contingency is not based on any specific scope of work, which is what I mean by unallocated, unlike a contractor allowance, which I'll cover in a future video. So essentially, if there is something on the project that comes up that was not anticipated or within the original construction documents, the contractor can access and utilize the money from the contingency to help pay for those unforeseen items. But there are typically rules that apply on how it can specifically be used. Now, these rules are essentially what is written in the contract and negotiated on between the contractor and the owner, similar to how the initial value of the contingency was set. The contract between the contractor and the owner should explain what the contingency is, how much it is, and how it is to be used, and how the contractor is to access those funds. Now, the contractor contingency isn't there to fund mistakes or scope that are already owed per the contract. That's already included and would be the responsibility of the contractor to begin with. If they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. So depending on what was written in the contract, the contractor contingency could cover items such as unforeseen conditions, design errors and design omissions, drastic material prices, change in project scope, unforeseen delays, and associated overtime costs such as weather delays and much more. Now, the contractor has the right to access and use contingency as needed. However, it still requires some sort of acknowledgement between the contractor and the owner to ensure that the contractor is utilizing that contingency per the language in the contract. In most cases, the contractor will need to compile information explaining how the contingency is being used and provide sufficient backup to justify its use. This could include cost and schedule backup, such as labor, material, equipment, and in the case of weather delays or days gone, some sort of history showing the impacts to the project and how they got to that point in the job. The overall contingency use is typically tracked on a log, which is shared with the owner's team so that the contractor and the owner are aware of the status of the funds. So that's just one type of contingency, and there's actually three total. So there is the contractor contingency, which we just talked about, but there can also be an owner contingency and a design contingency. So the owner can set up a design contingency on the front end as well, specifically to cover design changes throughout the course of pre-construction and even construction. And the owner can also set up their own contingency in order to direct owner changes that are outside the original scope. Now, why would an owner set up their own contingency when they're the ones paying for the project to begin with? Well, the benefit of the owner having their own owner contingency is because it's pre-built into the project budget so that the owner doesn't need to continuously go back to a board of directors, for example, for approval on cost changes, which helps limit the amount of back and forth during a fast paced project. So in essence, construction contingency is there to allow flexibility on these fast paced projects to help navigate unforeseen conditions in a timely manner while being accounted for in the initial budget. Okay, I hope this helped explain the basics of construction contingency. I will catch you in the next video. So as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.